Okay, so this video is on standard form. So the goal today is for you to be able to look at an equation, all right? And if you're looking at the front of this sheet that's um, on your screen, there's four different equations here. Um, number one, be able to tell what it is, right? Is it a parabola, a circle, an ellipse, a hyperbola? And then get it into the right form, right? The, the form that you're used to so that you can graph it and name all the different parts of it. Okay, now two of these are really, really easy to identify, and the other two just take a little bit of finesse. All right, so parabolas are very easy to tell because there's only one squared term, right? There's only, if you see an x squared, but the y is not squared, it's automatically a parabola, okay? And for hyperbolas, hyperbolas are the other ones that are pretty easy because there has to be subtraction in between the squared terms, Right, so if the squared terms have subtraction in between them, it's automatically hyperbola. Now, for the other two, for circles and ellipses, they both have pluses in between the squares, but the difference is the leading coefficient. If the leading coefficient is the same in front of both of them, then it's a circle. All right, so same leading coefficient. Let me write that up. Same leading coefficient. All right, and if the leading coefficient is different, then it's an ellipse. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is take a look at these four problems, okay? Pause the video and determine which of the four these are. All right, and when you come back and you unpause, I will have them written up here. And there they are. All right, so now if you turn the paper over on the back, we are not only going to identify what kind they are, but we're going to actually convert them to the right form. Because, again, looking at all four of those right now, I can see all four, um, but they don't look anything like what I'm used to. All right? Um, and we may not do these in the order that I'm looking at them, um, just because some of them are a little easier than others. All right, so, in fact, I'm going to start with the circle. So that means I'm going to be starting with this one. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of housekeeping. You've seen me do this before. Um, I'm going to put the X's together with its own blank, the Y's together with its own blank, um, the constants on the other side. Um, again, housekeeping. So here we go. So X squared minus 8X plus blank plus Y squared minus 20Y plus blank equal to negative 115 plus blank plus blank. Okay, so now I just have to figure out what goes in those blanks. So half of negative 8 is negative 4, and squared gives me 16. Half of negative 20 is negative 10. Squaring that is 100. All right, so now on the left, I'm going to factor. I'm going to get x minus 4 squared plus y minus 10 squared. And then when I combine all these like terms over here, I get 1 and now it looks like a circle like you're used to. Okay, I'm going to do the parabola next because we've done some of these already. So the parabola is down here on the bottom right. <clears throat> so since, again, I can tell it's a parabola because there's only one number that's squared, I'm going to keep the x's on this side. I'm going to move everything else to the other side. So I'm going to have 8y minus 12 plus blank. All right, I'm going to take half of this, which is 2, and square it. The left-hand side, I'm going to factor. The right-hand side, I'm going to combine like terms. And then I'm trying to get the y by itself. So I'm going to move some stuff back over. In fact, no, I think I'm going to divide by 8 first. Let's divide everything by 8. So I now have 1 eighth of x plus 2 squared equal to y minus 1. So when I move the negative one to the other side, I will have the parabola in the exact form that I'm used to, where I can tell where the vertex is and what A is, etc. Okay, next, let's do the ellipse, which is this guy. All right, and again, I can tell it's an ellipse because I have addition in between the squares, but the coefficients are different. Okay, and on this one is where I kind of need to um, slow down just a little. <clears throat> so step one, I'm going to get all the x's together, the y's together, and the constants on the other side. 
So it'll look something like this. 25 x squared minus 100 x plus blank plus y squared minus 2y plus blank negative 76 plus blank plus blank. Okay, now if you remember when you learned how to complete the square, it only works if the leading coefficient is 1. And so right now I have an issue here, and the issue is that there's a 25 right here. So out of the terms that have the x's, I'm going to factor out a 25, leaving me with x squared minus 4x plus blank. The rest of this stuff stays the same. I haven't done anything to the rest of this. Okay. So I'm going to fill in this blank over here first, just because this is a little bit easier. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, and squared is 1. Okay, that part's pretty easy. But this part, even though I'm filling in this blank with a 4, right, because that's half of this term squared, on the other side, I'm not putting a 4. I'm putting a 100, because I... I haven't changed the left-hand side by just 4. I've changed it by 25 times 4. So this is 100. Okay, so now let me leave that 25 out there and factor. Let me factor the y terms. And let me combine all these like terms, which I believe comes out to be 25. All right, now we said that this was an ellipse. And all the ellipses I've ever done and you've ever done have always equaled 1, which means I need to divide by 25. I need to divide everything by 25. So we get x minus 2 squared over 1 plus y minus 1 squared over 25 equals 1. All right. Um, and then we'll do the hyperbola last. All right, and again, I can tell it's a hyperbola because of right here, there being subtraction in between the uh, squared terms. So I'm going to, again, do a little bit of housekeeping, meaning I'm going to uh, put the x's together with their own blank, minus 25y squared, put the y's together with their own blank, and then move the 76 over with their two blanks. Okay. Um, now here's sort of the same issue. I can't complete the square for the y's because of this 25 that's not a 1. So I'm going to have to factor it out. So I'm going to have a negative 25 on the outside. Watch the sign right here. This becomes minus 4y. Really, really important that you watch out for those negatives. Okay, now I can complete the square. So half of this negative 14 is negative 7. Squaring that is 49. Half of this negative 4 is negative 2. Squaring that is 4. But I've actually changed... Hold on, that looks funny. There we go. I've changed this side of the equation by negative 100. Okay, so there it is, negative 100. So now I can start factoring. x minus 7 squared minus 25 times y minus 2 squared equals, equals 25. All right, and again, because it's a hyperbola, it has to equal 1, so let me divide everything by 25. So I've got x minus 7 squared over 25 minus y minus 2 squared over 1 equals 1. All right. Um, I really wish that I was there to teach this to you in person. Um, I can answer your questions through Remind or email.